Saturday morning, stripping boxes. Pulling in the honey. And as you can see, there isn't a lot to forage on around here. This area is hitting dearth. The bees are actively robbing the empty boxes. This stack of boxes will be going to a yard close to sunflowers. Obviously not here. They're still in mild flow. As we strip off all these honey boxes, we are taking all their food and typically these bottom brood chambers are packed full of brood and pollen. So there's very little food source in. So we have to make sure that these hives are still actively bringing in nectar to keep them alive, keep them going. <clears throat> so this yard is. The other very important consideration that we've got to watch is that pollen. Without this pollen, these bees shut down. Last year we ran into a dearth. Um, it was, what is it, July 25th? They stopped bringing pollen in August 1st. We had our winter nest set up halfway through August just because they could not carry on the brood cycles because they had no pollen. So even just with a little bit of this pollen, just a trace of it coming in, that natural spirit, whatever is on that pollen, those was essentials that we can't replicate. If we can just grasp that little bit of pollen, we can supplement the rest with, uh, with our patties, with our supplement feed. Yes, 
I am. Yippers! For my next installment of the a Canadian Beekeepers blog, we're stripping off some nukes. We're early Sunday morning. And the reason why I'm showing you this yard is because I'm extremely excited. We drove six miles here and I didn't see a single flower. Not in the ditches, uh, I seen a little, just a small little second cut hay field. And that was mostly the reason why I only returned one box to these guys when we put these boards in. It's because there's, but I anticipated very little flow. We got here when we set the boards, I was shaking nectar off the lids. I said, oh wow, this is neat. And I seen a canola field two miles that way. I figured, oh, that's where it's coming from. Well, that canola field is done now. And we come back here to strip off these boxes and they're absolutely plugged full of nectar. It kind of got me a little bit baffled and it's gotta be a second cut alfalfa field around here. I bet you within the two mile radius here, what I'm not seeing, I bet you there's a big ass alfalfa, second cut alfalfa field. These guys got a pile of rain mixed with hail, but I bet you these guys are pulling honey off this alfalfa. I'm looking at the front entrances and I'm not seeing any pollen coming in. But I'm pulling out frames. I, you know, these boxes are two thirds full of honey already. It's been like three days, two days. So I'm not seeing, there's a little bit of pollen there. So it's gotta be alfalfa. Alfalfa doesn't kick out much pollen. Bees can't grab a lot of pollen off alfalfa. These boxes are packed, not only with bees, but with honey. And I can tell there's a heavy flow going on right now. And I can tell that these hives are in terrific shape. Because of all the burr comb they're making up on top. We didn't bring any empties. We're going to have to come back here to drop another box on top of every one of these colonies. Just to make sure we catch this flow. And we don't want to plug out that brood nest. Right now, taking a peek down here, we have six frames in each nuke, and we're just taking a look down here, and they've practically got the whole box full of brood. So there is actually isn't really too much of a concern of plugging out the brood nest because the brood's dominating all the space. Pushing down a little bit of nectar actually wouldn't be a bad idea, but it's coming in hard, so we got to catch it. Thursday. It's Sunday now. And I would say that's about two-thirds full of nectar. Fresh nectar. And it's uh, light in color. So my guess is this is alfalfa coming in. 